Hey, Retcon Raider here. With special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including, but not limited to, Matthew Smith, Revenant, Eloise, A Nerd in Warpaint, Dragon Matrix 7, Eerie V23, Excelsior, Goatlead, Kazorm, Nathan Welch Jr., Robbie B., Thomas Pietkowski, Trip Hoppenskip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to the Hard West 2 pre-launch demo. Uh, just a reminder, this is, of course, a beta playtest, so it is not going to be as polished or complete as the full launch version of the game, which is due out in another week or two. But uh, that said, based on what we've seen thus far, it's pretty decent. The combat is fun and uh, reasonably fast-paced, if a bit less granular than I would personally prefer. And uh, the story, although rushed in places and a bit off-kilter, does hit a lot of fun uh, general themes that you would expect from a supernatural western. The atmosphere is pretty solid. The voice acting's a bit inconsistent and could use some work, but uh, that's not bad either, especially for a budget title. Anyway, let's uh, keep digging into this thing. I don't think we have too much left, so we should wrap this up today. Shield your eyes, so the snow don't blind you. We could all use some hot coffee. Oh good, another red cross. That should be fun. Yeah. In the distance, we spied a flimsy cross, half buried by the avalanche. Crest on a crutch! She's alive! Flynn edged closer to clear the snow off the old woman's face. The crucified woman's eyes flew open, and she let out a horrifying howl of pain. Yeah, that's not great. Flynn held the flask to the old woman's cracked lips so she could sip the spirits. From up close, I could see frost on her eyelashes. She gasped and moaned and then thanked Flynn. Her voice was as worn and thin as the soles of a poor man's shoes. Who did this to you? A man. Just a man. He made me watch while he killed Stan. As he took out his eyes. He was about to end me, too. Then the avalanche came. Crushed me good. Crushed him, too. Dead, I hope. I hung on. Ate snow. Don't know how long. Oh boy, this is not what I was hoping to start this episode on, but, uh... Put her down? She's not an animal! We need to dig her up. Take her to... He's right. She's done. It's the kindest thing to do. Yeah, uh, Bill, you want to, uh, take care of it? That was the right move. I promise you, I'll make him pay. Yeah, thanks. The old woman died with a soft sigh. We left the place with a weight on our shoulders. I'd seen evil before, but this? I hope the killer really did die under that avalanche. And I hope it hurt. No, he's one million percent still alive. They, there's no way they'd set all this up just to have him die off screen. I think I can see something. Do we have to wander in this snow? You finally reach the pass. A huge mountain of snow and rocks blocks the passage. The tracks, the road, and the frozen river all vanish under the snow. Here, Jen, I found something. The peddler and his wagons were gone, but near the avalanche we found tracks made by a cart and some horses. It looked like the wagons and the riders had gone northwest, 
along the river. Damn it. We'd better hurry, folks. And I'm guessing that's it Can right there. Anything? The trail we were following ended at the ford. The riders must have crossed the river right here. We're getting close. Posse, guns at the ready. Ah, there we go. When will we finally camp? We're lost, aren't we? The camp consisted of a few wagons, a number of tents, and a small campfire. From afar, it was difficult to say if these were the carts we were after, or how many folks we'd need to face to claim them. We found a hidden spot from which we could take a good look at the camp. The shopkeeper and his supplies were there, guarded by a group of outlaws. They outnumber us by a few folks. I say we strike fast and hard to even the odds. And how about we at least try to parlay first? What do you think, Jen? Oh, and here's our chance to bump Flynn up to Companion. Nice. I mean, nothing personal to Deer, but yeah. I feel like Flynn does bring up a good point that we should probably talk before we just rush in blasting. Shopkeeper aside, we are all bandits here. I feel like at least some modicum of professional courtesy is due. Plus, of course, uh, on our end, that'll let us go back and collect the amulet from that tree. So, so it is win-win, even if we do end up getting into a gunfight. Trust me, Jin. That's for the best. Well, I do consider myself a man of reason. Let's appeal to their greed. We approached the camp, waving a white handkerchief. The outlaws agreed to talk, so I told them about the bounty on the shopkeeper and the goods that we intended to collect. And there we go. Flynn is now upgraded to a full-on companion. Huzzah. You hear that, boys? There's a bounty on that old prick's head. Hmm, let me think. Yeah, all right, the guy's yours. But the supplies? We gotta keep them to survive this crazy winter. Wow, they, these guys are a lot more reasonable than I expected. They didn't even try to strong arm us. Um, okay. We could still gun them down and take everything, but uh, now I'd feel kinda guilty. Well, I mean, we said we'd bring something back. How about the guy in one one crate from his stock? We got a deal? Yes, we do, my friend. The leader whistled at his men, and they hauled us up the shopkeeper and some provisions. We made the exchange as agreed, and parted our ways. Okay. Those are some, uh, surprisingly reasonable bandits. Looks like that also gives us another means of healing, so... We don't always have to go to the surgeon. See anything in the snow? I can't feel my extremity. Not that I normally... We'll bring this guy back momentarily. I just want to go grab those lost supplies. Cover your eyes. All this snow can blind you. Buried in the snow, we found some supplies. Some farmer must have lost them when the strange weather came. At least, that's what Bill said. We should mark this spot and let the townsfolk claim it. They need it more than we do. Gotta say, Bill, you're more of a bleeding heart than I expected. What with uh, being undead and all, but uh, yeah, yeah, sure. You know good advice when you hear it. Good. Old Man Bill seemed surprised, which pissed me off a bit. I'm not a monster, after all. So that gives us two options for that cursed tray. Good call, Carter. Sometimes it's all about the little things. Fair enough. Oh, hey. Old Mervyn's place. Winter in June. Crazy stuff. 
A neat old shack stood in the snow. Outside of it, a wiry old man was chopping wood. Hey there, old timer. You living here all by your lonesome? Hey, yep. I like being by myself. Most of the time. And what brings you bunch out here? You came to Old Mervyn for a reason, didn't you? What do you want to know? Well, we heard you might know a way out of this cursed valley. Yeah, I know my way around here better than anyone. And I'll be glad to help you. If you help me first. See, a while back a man from town came to visit me. He was looking for a way out of here, just like you, so I told him. Then we played cards, and let me tell you, he cheated me good. When I caught him, though, he grabbed all my money and lit out. You don't say. I, I can't imagine that man might be named Kestrel Colt. The one missing member of our posse who happens to be a card shark. I guess it would actually make sense that he got dumped out here somewhere, uh, near where we ended up. I think I can see where this is headed. Yeah, you and me both, Flynn. I don't care much about the cash, but he also took a keepsake from me. You'll know when you see it. I managed to plug him one in the back, but he got away anyway. My legs ain't much good for running and chasing these days. I saw him running toward the eastern mountains, though. Nothing there but an old mine. Maybe he went there. So here's the deal. Find him, bring me back what he done took, and I'll help you. Got it? Got it. Don't sweat it, old man. We'll track this guy down. Thanks. Glad to hear it. So what else is new, old timer? Anything we should know? Well, as if this dad-gasted winter wasn't already enough, that jinx ghost train just came through. Damn thing brought down an avalanche that blocked the eastern pass. That's the only way in and out of here. And if all that ain't enough to piss in your porridge, it seems we got a killer on the loose, too. Keep your eyes peeled for the red snow, if you don't believe me. Oh, no, no, I... I, I do believe you, old man. I've, uh... Yeah. I think I spotted something in that direction. All right, let's look over there. Can you see anything? Oh, this fucking cold. We stood in front of an entrance to a small mining shaft blocked by rocks. The cave-in must have been pretty recent. Blood trail leads here. Seems like this Mervyn's con man ran out of luck. Ah, I see. And this is what the $3 pickaxe was for. Looks like it'll save us a stick of dynamite and net us an extra bottle of whiskey. Not too shabby. Though it looks like we get the magic cards either way. It took us a few hours to clear the entrance enough to crawl inside. There we found an outlaw's corpse. So, not Kestrel. Seemed like he bled to death. He had some useful items with him, including a silver harmonica with the name Mervyn carved on it. Uh, what about that rifle he appears to be clutching? Do we not want that? Alright, fair enough. I guess we'll, uh... Get this harmonica back to Merv. Wow, okay. I mean, at least we got some cards out of this, but uh, I was really expecting Kestrel. Though, though I'm sure he'll uh, turn up at some point. Oh, right, right. We just uh, picked up a pair, so we can actually unlock an ability now. Yeah, yeah, let's, um, let's have a look at our options here. 
Looks like some abilities are also locked behind loyalty levels, which I guess makes sense. We actually have two pair. Plus one damage when in bravado. Okay. That's not bad. A bit underwhelming, but good for maintaining kill strikes. Uh, okay, so what else have we got? Stroke of Luck. Uh, if Flynn has at least 100 luck, she gets a bonus to crit. That is also fairly underwhelming and much less predictable. Dead Man's Revenge. Uh, Bill deals damage to every enemy in line of sight. Damage increases based on lost hit points. Potentially devastating, but I'm not generally a fan of abilities that scale with damage taken. I, uh, I prefer to plan around the idea that my guys aren't going to get shot up. That's a solid maybe, though. Let's see what Deer has. I mean, I guess we could go all in and do two pair on someone, but I feel like we should spread this stuff out a bit. Wild Run. A headlong charge that increases base damage by plus one for every two spaces moved. Interesting. That would actually open a lot of extra utility for his melee-centric playstyle, especially if we combine it with cards that further boost his movement. And yeah, then we'll uh, toss the other pair to Jen to unlock the bravado thing. He's our designated sniper, so that feels like a decent fit. Okay, I think we're good. Do we have to wander in this snow? Yeah. Oh, we need to get out of this shit. Hey, Grandpa, this here what you're looking for? The old man guffawed and snatched the harmonica. He smacked his lips and blew into it, forcing out some false notes. He grinned, happy as a pig in shit. So, do you know how to leave this damn valley or not? You're welcome. Now, do you know how to leave this damn valley? Welcome back, Jen. Well, there's always Whistle Pass down to the south. I reckon it's blocked by snow too, but it's tight enough you might be able to blast through it. If and you could scrounge up some of that famous blue dynamite from the old mine down that way. Right, the famous blue dynamite. Why didn't I think of that? What is that, like, soul dynamite? I hear tell that a group of bandits set up camp there now, though. In that case, you should try this mountain path. The old man scribbled a simple map in the snow. That way, you could maybe surprise them from inside. Should at least give you a fighting chance. Whistle pass it is, then. Thanks, old man. All right, folks. Guess we're headed south. Where did all this snow come from? I don't know. What, do I look like some kind of snow at all? Shield your eyes so the snow don't blind you. All right, so we've got a gunfight down south. I think my nose is frostbitten. Let's tie off these loose ends real quick. Oh, my lashes are freezing over. As we rode into Boomtown, the townsfolk greeted us with wary silence. Except for one fella who seemed to understand the situation better than the others. He stood in our way. Eager to parlay. 
Gotta say, we're much obliged for you getting rid of that bastard Richie and his men. Awful bunch, all of them. He spat at the road and looked at us, trying to read our faces. Yeah, I don't see much reason to antagonize this guy. Easy now, partner. He ain't got nothing against this town. He seemed relieved. Good, good. You'll be welcome here, even though we don't have much to offer. Not until our shop trouble is solved. And he was right. We moved through the town unharmed. The saloon was closed, leaving the train station and the nearby general store the only public places to visit. Can you see anything? We headed straight for the general store. The wanted poster with the previous owner's face on it was still hanging on the door. Howdy, partners. How may I help you on this fine day? Well, we got your predecessor uh, tied up out front. I'm assuming you still want him? Splendid. Allow me to fetch our new deputy sheriff. Once the scoundrel's in his hands, I'll pay you the bounty. The shopkeeper ran out of the store and returned with the deputy in a matter of minutes. We handed the old trader over to him and got our compensation. When asked about the goods, we explained that they'd been stolen by a group of outlaws before we found the fugitive. Yeah, I guess that's close enough to the truth. And I guess they just accepted that. Hey, look at that. And we do indeed have access to a new assortment of shooting irons. Which we are no nowhere even close to being able to afford. Wow. I'm not... I'm not sure... There'd be any way for us to afford some of this stuff. If we hadn't gone to the surgeon and we had grabbed those supplies from the outlaws, that would give us an extra 60 bucks to play with. But that would only be enough for the $100 revolver. Though I suppose we might have pulled some extra loot from those bandits. So there is that. Well, that is a crying shame, but... Such is the price we pay for our relative pacifism. We can get a whole mess of beans, though. We did still pull the uh, free provisions, though. That's 35 bucks. So in theory, that almost makes up for the 40 we didn't get for grabbing the supplies. Shield your eyes so the snow don't blind you. Okay, so am I forgetting anything? I can't feel my extremity. Ah, Red Cross. Oh, and the Cursed Tree. We'll head there next. Let's go there. We found another one of the crosses. This time, the victim seemed to be an old man. He was frozen stiff, and the ravens were fighting for his eyes. Behind the cross, we saw a bundle of clothes and a simple backpack. Another one? What the hell is going on here? Be careful, Jen. Maybe this one bites, too. I wonder why they left his things like that. Whoever did this didn't kill him for his things, Carter. Well, at least this one ain't a biter. Who? For a second there, I thought maybe old Death had taken a holiday in this frozen hellhole. You're the expert. What do you think about this? Oh, and another chance to bump up loyalty. We've already got Flynn and Bill up at Companion, but as we saw back on their character sheets, we need them at least at rank 2 to unlock any new abilities. So we could either keep bumping up one of them, or we could start working on Deer, who at this point is sitting at zero loyalty, which probably isn't ideal. 
Of course I'm right. It's fresh. The man died a day or two ago. No tribe I know of would do this to him. Besides, crosses aren't really our thing. Seems we have a killer on the loose. One who's not entirely right in the head. Well, not as informative as I might have liked, but uh, alright. Let's, uh, let's head out. This ain't our business. Though I'm sure it will be eventually. We're lost, aren't we? We returned to the cursed tree. The lumberjack and his son were still there, waiting for God knows what. You're back. My poor son's still old and decrepit. I wonder if getting that amulet from the tree might help him. But I got no way to reach it. Hey, Bill. You're already dead, right? Would you be so kind as to uh, chop this thing down for us? Right. Bill grabbed the lumberjack's axe and sent to work. If the curse had any effect on him, it didn't show. After an hour of hacking and chopping, the cursed tree toppled over, and I grabbed the amulet from between the broken branches. I pocketed the amulet and we left the lumberjack and his son to their fate. Oh, well, <laughs> you know, I kind of thought we'd have an option to help them, but, uh, I guess I forgot that we are, in fact, not great people. <laughs> I suppose I'd uh, feel guilty, but we literally had no choice, so. So, instead, I will uh, simply enjoy our new trinket, which will, of course, go to Flynn, our resident witch. That'll let her use her uh, Shadow Swap ability more regularly. We'll just have to make sure we get a kill each time we actually do it. Oh, lucky we found these horses! I think I spotted something in that direction. All right, amigos. Looks like we've got one last gunfight queued up. Cover your eyes. All this snow can blind you. We sneaked through the mountain path that Mervyn showed us, and soon we were looking at the enemy camp from above. Spirits bless that old geezer. Now we can get a jump on these marauders. Yeah, yeah, sounds good to me. We're half an hour into this thing. We gotta shoot something. So, we murder all the trash in here. What then? First of all, we need to get some of that blue dynamite. Yes, that might mean we need to clear out these marauders here. Then we take the explosives to the block past, and boom, we got a way out. Let's move. Looks like they know we're here. Yeah, I'd say so. That guy basically just watched us have that conversation. I think it's safe to say they've uh, essentially dropped the stealth mechanics from the first game. Which, to be fair, weren't terribly popular from what I recall. No one else in sight. And that immediately tops off Flynn's health. Leave it to me. Let's not push her up too far. We want to keep the posse relatively close to each other. Ready when you are. 
We'll move up, hug cover, wait to see if another wave shows up. Actually, let's spring Flint up a little farther. There we go. I will. Yeah, I mean, that might have been a mistake, but they would have come running anyway. Goodness, there were a whole bunch of them tucked in that corner back there. Yeah? All right, all right. Let's see what we can do here. First things first, let's shore up Flynn's health some. I'll try. Steady. Okay, okay. We need to whittle down these shotgunners before they become a problem. Flynn, I am going to need you to move. Looking for trouble? I'll just tuck you right here. Yes, okay. We will do this. You go get him, dear. Nice, nice. That's one. Oh, shoot. Wait, was that... That's not what I wanted. Uh, fingers crossed. Let's dance. Hey, there we go. That's not so bad. Is 
Still trying to wrap my head around the whole bravado system. Wow, okay. That could have been a whole lot worse. Just point. Bean break. What's the play? You know what? I could have I could have used that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Need someone dead. I really need to stop going for the easier targets first. Those are essentially bridges, uh, freebies to help get you to the harder targets. You know what? I could have just teleported that guy out of there, too. Plopped him right out in the open. Will do. Well, deer is going to get shot again. You know what? Maybe it's maybe it's a good thing I didn't teleport Flynn out there. Let's, uh, let's try to actually think this out this time. Oh, actually, this is a good chance to do the... the optional objective. One and only. Yes, this should work. Shotgun guy is not actually marked as being targeted. Let's do it. Yeah. 
Hey, okay, so it did still target him. Just point. Now let's get deer in there. That just leaves the guys in the tower. Okay, yes, I think I'm getting this. Ready to roll. Let's get this over with. What's the rush? You know, I may have uh, underestimated the tactical depth of this game because the bravado mechanic, plus the uh, fancy powers they give you, does change things up a good bit from uh, what I'm used to in other XCOM likes. Set me loose. And there we go. your time. Yeah, so once you start figuring out how to string all this stuff together, it does go much more smoothly. Halfway across the map now. The dynamite is in the building right across this warehouse from us. Let's see here. Two swings per rifleman. Calculate movement in. We'll have deer leapfrog up to the balcony. Right. Uh. You are wise to fear me. Done and done. <laughs> ah. Ooh, shotgunner. And yes, that works. Now let's bring the rest of the posse up. We'll grab elevation. That should give us a nice safe spot to engage from. to drop that gunner, but no one else is close enough for it. What's the play? We'll just hunker down this turn. We'll do.
That works. Yeah, yeah, we can drop the gunner, and uh, the shotgunner didn't even come at us, so we can just drop that guy at our leisure. And that's the warehouse. I'm sure we've got another wave in the next building, so let's start let's start pushing for that other balcony. Six guys in there. All the more reason to hug cover on approach. Huh. No movement. I guess they haven't spotted us? So maybe there is some minor element of stealth. I will. No open targets. They got themselves pretty well entrenched. One and only. That's fine. We'll just use this turn to regroup. You know what? Let's bring let's bring Deard down. We want him closer so he can rush into melee. Actually, you know what? Let's not take any chances. We'll hold off on provoking these guys till next turn. Leave it to me. Exploding drunk. On my way. That is quite a job title. Leave them to me. Shotgunner. And it is on.
The exploding drunk is clearly our biggest threat, but he just parked himself in line of sight, so... We can just do this. Then Flynn can immediately recoup her hit point. But we do not have any other easy targets from here. Just point. Obviously, we want to drop the drunk. Twenty three hit points. Ready when you are. Eight, twelve, sixteen. Yeah, we can do that. There we go. Yeah. Die! Lovely. That's the boss. Now we just have to pick off the stragglers. Nice. <laughs> Looking for trouble? Not much we can do with Flynn up there, so... I guess we'll bring her down. Prep her for next turn. Shotgunner charges in headlong. Ready to roll. And one rifleman moves to flank. Interesting. But he's still an easy target. Still got that last rifleman hanging back. Yeah, that guy's tucked in there pretty good. Ready, like always. One and only. Looking for trouble? Easy.
Oh, right, I forgot about you. Need someone dead? Yes, I do, but you can't do it by yourself. Well, that's unfortunate. I just completely blanked on that guy. Done and done. I mean, to be fair, a few extra points of damage aren't really going to make a difference at this point. Provisions will heal us back to full, either way. Just point. Hawa. You are wise to fear me! Thank you, dear. Yeah? Which just leaves this one last guy, who refuses to show his face. Can I open that door? I'm not sure we can open doors unless we're passing through them. Yeah, we'll just play this one safe. We've already been shot enough for one day. This guy is not making this easy. Do that again! I dare you! And I'll spill your guts to show you all the colors of the wind! Too far to charge. Okay, let's just do this. See me shuffle. I'm still here. Need someone dead. <laughs> that, we're done. All right, everyone. Get back. That explosion was wild. Keep it down. Won't take much to start another avalanche. Once we get out, what then? We go after the ghost train. Fucking mammon. He suckered us in and then cheated us cold. We'll track him down. We'll get back everything he took from us, and then we'll send him back to hell. Big words, Carter. But that's what you've always been, right? Big, empty words. Clive? Is that you? This is some kind of a trick. Kestrel Cult is dead. That'd be awfully convenient for you, wouldn't it? We are dead. 
done with the easy way now. Ah, and I guess that's it. So we are well and truly done, at least for now. A shame, but I guess that does save us on provisions. Uh, so, final thoughts. You know, overall, uh, I've already said it, but yeah, I, I liked it. Perhaps not the best or most in-depth strategy game, but, but not bad. There's a lot of things in there that I think work, and... Um, Obviously, it wasn't intended to be as granular as your old-school strategy RPGs or anything. It's more intended to emulate a classic spaghetti western-style feel, the, uh, you know, more, more the quick and the dead and less unforgiven. From a story standpoint, I feel like the writing could be tightened up a bit. You know, obviously there was some weird pacing, especially towards the beginning and the end. Though to be fair on the ending, um, obviously the full game wouldn't be stopping here. So it is possible they just sort of condensed and recut things there for the sake of a, an overly dramatic cliffhanger. But you know, like in looking at that bit, for example, one of the things that really sort of jumped out at me was Jen Carter's throwaway line about, about how it couldn't possibly be Kestrel Colt because Kestrel was dead. But why would he think that Kestrel was dead? There was no evidence to imply that. In fact, everything he had encountered up until that point would actually imply the exact opposite. Every other member of the gang not only survived, but also got awesome superpowers. Not to mention, we were also traveling with Bill the Undead Gunslinger, which would imply that even if Kestrel was dead, there's no reason to assume that would stop Kestrel from showing up again anyway. But that's just quibbling. You know, the story, uh, the writing, obviously I don't think is intended to really be the big draw for the game anyway. That's largely just an engine to drive the player from one gunfight to the next. Which is fine. I mean, that is essentially the structure of most strategy RPGs, I think. A series of mandatory fights with the occasional optional fight on the side. The characters were fine. I mean, interesting enough that I remembered who they were. And again, uh, serviceable for driving the story forward. So no real complaints there. I did notice the perspective in the writing changed a couple of times. I wasn't always clear on whether the narrator was supposed to be Jin or some other outside observer because it just sort of juggled from one event to the next. That was slightly disorienting, but certainly not the end of the world. But yeah, not bad. I am looking forward to seeing what the full game is like. That uh, drops on August 4th, so y'all will be able to try that one out for yourself soon enough. That said, let's go ahead and wrap this thing up before I just fully devolve into rambling. Hard West 2 by Ice Code Games and Good Shepherd Entertainment. Full launch is on August 4th. Looking forward to it. Uh, feel free to let me know what you guys thought about this one in the comments below. And uh, let me know if you might like to see me revisit this one once it is out because I certainly would not mind an excuse to delve a little bit deeper into this supernatural western. Might make a nice change of pace from all that uh, grim dark fantasy we've been doing lately. Oh, and uh, as always, while I have enjoyed playing the uh, Hard West 2 demo, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website. And if you'd like to help support the channel, maybe see me do more videos like this one in the future, feel free to push the buttons that do the things, or uh, maybe even check out the Patreon or that newfangled YouTube memberships thing. Links are in that there description. It's the kindest thing to do.